Mr President, delegates, it's a great pleasure to stand before you uh, today and as a fellow South Australian can I congratulate you sir on the great job that you are doing uh, serving our party. You served as a great Premier of South Australia, of course as a diplomat representing Australia and now supporting our federal uh, party, especially in this next uh, 12 months when we come up to uh, an election in South Australia and a federal election. Delegates, my hero was my father my late uh, father, who taught me many things. He was a humble man. He grew up in a housing trust home in Trust Street, Birkenhead. And for those of you who don't know, it's very adjacent to Port Adelaide, my beloved uh, Port Adelaide in South Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and he taught me many things, but one of the most important things that he taught me is that we live in the best country on this earth. <laughs> and he said... It didn't matter where you started life, if you worked hard, if you set your ambition, you could achieve whatever you wanted. And there are very few places in the entire world where this is the case, but it is the case in Australia. And our country is the best place in the world, and we have set our ambition to deal with the coronavirus. Not to limp across the line, uh, not to just survive the coronavirus, but to actually thrive through it. And I'm very proud that we have done extraordinarily well under the leadership of Prime Minister Morrison, who has listened to evidence, who has listened to science, who has listened to the experts and crafted our response. Now, we're not through it yet. 750,000 people are becoming infected with the coronavirus every single day. 13,000 people are losing their lives to the coronavirus every single day. But the leadership that we have here from the Prime Minister, from our excellent Federal Health Minister, Greg Hunt, uh, to the National uh, Cabinet, chaired expertly, expertly uh, by uh, the steady hand of our Prime Minister on that tiller, has put us in an enviable position globally. And that, hopefully, will continue well into the future. But it hasn't happened by accident, and it has happened, as Premier Berejiklian said, in partnership with the people of our country, building up that uh, trust relationship. And the sacrifices that individuals and families and importantly the business community have made dealing uh, with this coronavirus are the very things that have made Australia a very safe place to live and kept our economy strong. Mr President, as you well know, South Australia is the next state to go to the polls. And in fact, uh, in South Australia we haven't won back-to-back -back majority Liberal governments since Sir Thomas Playford won the election back in 1959. So this is a very important election for us uh, in South Australia. We went to the last election promising more jobs, lower costs and better services. And that is exactly and precisely what we've been focused on. Despite uh, the very obvious uh, distraction uh, of the coronavirus, we haven't let this uh, coronavirus response take us off our track. We have delivered more jobs lower costs and better services. In fact, we now find ourselves in South Australia with more people employed in our state now than ever before in the history of South Australia. This is something that every South Australian should be enormously proud of, and we do that in partnership with the federal government. And I would like to acknowledge uh, the attorney, Michaelia Cash, especially in her previous role as the Minister for Employment, working together. One of the first things we did in South Australia was to sign up to the Skilling Australians program, a joint program, federal and state. So far, we have delivered a staggering 37,500 new apprenticeships and traineeships in South Australia, and there's tens of thousands more to come as we create those skills, those jobs of the future. We've also delivered lower costs, and we needed to deliver lower costs because South Australia had a high taxing government in place for 16 years. And I'm very proud that on coming to government, we took away all payroll tax for small business in South Australia. In fact, no business in South Australia with a payroll of up to $1.5 million pays a single cent in payroll tax in South Australia. We've taken uh, the axe uh, to water prices in South Australia. We've lowered energy costs in South Australia. We've put $360 million back into the pockets of property owners in South Australia uh, by slashing the emergency services levy in South Australia. And we've taken our land tax rate 
from a staggering, eye-watering 3.7% annually down to meet the average on mainland Australia at 2.4%. So whilst other state governments might want to make it more uh, difficult for people to invest, less attractive to them uh, to invest, we say in South Australia, come over. We've got lower costs. We want you to come and invest in South Australia. And the third plank of our policy to the last election was, of course, the area of improved services. And again, a massive partnership that we've delivered with the federal government. Record spend in our most recent budget, $16.7 billion worth of projects delivering improved hospitals right across our state, improved emergency department capacity and capability, which is so crucial in making sure that we can continue to deliver against that increasing presentation rate in our emergency departments right across the entire nation. We're very proud to be transitioning our Year 7s from primary school to secondary school. We're the last state in Australia to do it. Labor refused to do it. Uh, those Year 7s will start in secondary school next year for the first time in South Australia. We're very proud of that and we're spending a record 1.1 billion dollars upgrading our schools and our infrastructure in those schools right across our state. And of course, uh, we always love investing in our physical infrastructure, our roads, our bridges and our ports. And we're doing that again in great partnership with the federal government. We will continue to deliver against these election promises that we made, because that's what Liberal governments do. We deliver on those commitments, but we want more. We've got greater ambition. And that's why uh, we're always going to be in South Australia, very respectful to our traditional sectors like agriculture, mining, manufacturing, construction, tourism, international students. But we also in South Australia now have one eye towards those future industries. Defence, space, cyber, machine learning, blockchain, hydrogen, the creative industries, which are always very important in South Australia. It's in our DNA. And I've got to tell you, much of this ambition is wrapped up uh, in a site in Adelaide named by Colonel Light as Lot 14. And Lot 14 is now the home of the Australian Space Agency. We love having it in South Australia. We also have the Space Discovery Centre, Australia's mission control. We have the smart satellite Cooperative Research Centre, the largest space-related research program in the history of Australia. And it's such an important CRC as we move uh, from a very small number of large satellites to a very large number of small satellites operating in low Earth orbit in constellations. And the centre for much of that research and development is on Lot 14. In fact, we have companies there building satellites right in the centre of our city. On that site, we also have MIT, the number one ranked university in the world. We have Stone and Chalk with our great 600 seat incubator and accelerator. We have the Australian Institute of Machine Learning, uh, led by world experts, wor working with some of the largest companies in the world, uh, as John Olson said, attracting some of the largest companies in the world to consider South Australia, some of them for the very first time ever. And the other area which is so crucial uh, that we are investing on in, in South Australia at Lot 14 is, is cyber. We've established the Australian Cyber Collaboration Centre. Delegates, I think Australia has done an extraordinary job uh, dealing with a global pandemic. I think the world will come through this pandemic. We're learning more about this insidious disease every single day. But make no mistake, uh, there are going to be other challenges which face the world. And in fact, I would put it to you that the next global disruption is going to be a cyber disruption. Now, I know that Australia is doing an enormous amount of work, an enormous amount of work uh, to make sure that we are as prepared and as resilient as possible. But all of that work cannot be done by the federal government. We need the corporate sector. We need the private sector. Uh, we need individuals to become more cyber aware, more cyber resilient, because it's not a matter of if this is going to occur, it is now just a matter of when this occurs and how prepared we can be. And that's one of the reasons why on Lot 14 we've created the Australian Cyber Collaboration Centre, Australia's largest commercial cyber range and a massive training academy. 
When I first became the uh, Premier of South Australia, I, I chaired uh, the Emergency Management Council. I was informed about the increasing threat uh, to our data, the number of attacks uh, on our data. And of course, my primary responsibility was to make sure that we were doing everything in South Australia that we could uh, to make ourselves as impenetrable as possible, to prepare ourselves for those uh, inevitable attacks on our data. But the flip side of threat is opportunity. And I think there is an enormous opportunity uh, for a state like South Australia and a country like Australia uh, to create businesses, to create opportunities, to create jobs uh, out of what I think will inevitably become one of the fastest growing uh, sectors uh, in the entire world. The Prime Minister and I uh, go to a poll, uh, both of us, in the next 12 months. Now, the, the Prime Minister is an extraordinary campaigner. I know that he's looking forward to that clash of ideas, presenting his credentials uh, to the people of Australia. And that's exactly and precisely what we'll be doing in South Australia. And we'll be saying to the people of South Australia, let's continue with a coalition government in Canberra and a Liberal administration in South Australia. We've been able to demonstrate to the people of our state what the advantages are of cutting out all the fake fights with Canberra, sitting down, working with the Prime Minister who shares our ambition, his great ambition for us in South Australia around critical sectors like defence and like space and so many other areas which are in our mutual interest. We have uh, created more jobs in South Australia uh, over the last 12 months and we've seen, I think, probably in any previous 12-month period, 53 thousand new jobs. More jobs now than pre-COVID. How many other places in the world could say that? We've restored business confidence, consumer confidence, investor confidence in South Australia. We've stopped that exodus of capital and young people out of our state and we've created hope. And I want to finish on this statistic, one that we're very, very proud of in South Australia. For the first time since 1991, we now have a net migration to South Australia. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very grateful uh, for the opportunities of working with the Coalition. I'm very grateful uh, to working with my uh, colleagues, presenting a great future for South Australia. And I return to the theme at the beginning. We live in the best country in the world. Let's not risk that at the next state election, at the next federal election. Working together, we can continue to keep Australia the best country on earth. Thank you.